So I always keep this fake Hollywood money in my car. So when a homeless person asks for money, then I give them like a fake $5 bill. So I feel good about myself, they feel good. And then when they go to use it, they get arrested. So I'm actually like helping clean up the community, you know, getting them off the street. That loathsome and downright infuriating TikTok that you just watched was posted by John McKenty. John McKenty is a former aide to Donald Trump who was actually fired back in 2018 by John Kelly for failing a security clearance check. But the Trump administration actually rehired him back in 2020 after Trump dumped John Kelly. And now John McKenty is currently working on Trump's 2024 campaign, and he's also a senior advisor to the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025, which is a fascistic plan to basically destroy the administrative state and turned the United States into a Christian nationalist theocracy. Oh, and he also co-founded the right-wing dating app, The Right Stuff, back in 2022. Remember that cringeworthy ad that we all saw? That was that guy. Now, in the event Trump is reelected, he's almost certainly going to be a part of Trump's administration, and he recently laid out some of his plans for a second Trump term. And as you might have guessed, it's very unserious. Very within your control. And you bring up the elephant in the room, which is a stain on not only society, but the entire dating culture, which is pornography. Yeah. And I think whenever America bans that, which will be happening at some point, everyone will be much better off. I know, you know, people are like, well, you've never seen that. You know, heroin addicts know heroin's bad, you know? <laughs> so like yeah, yeah. people just because they've used it at some point, it's still yeah. addressing that fact. I think, you know, guys have this way distorted view of the world and how that should work. And the minute that goes away, this country will flourish. I actually do believe that. Right. You nip that one in the bud. Yes, because we all know that porn is what's causing all of society's problems. Get rid of porn and everything is going to be peachy keen, according to this dipshit. Very, very serious person. But long story short, John McCunty is a pretty busy guy, but he still manages to find time to get innocent homeless people arrested by giving them fake money. But... To an imbecile like him, I'm sure that he thinks this is all funny and it's just a prank, bro. But it's actually not just a prank. In fact, it's really serious because this is something that can get people killed. Remember, George Floyd was murdered by a police officer for allegedly trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill. And furthermore, he's confessing to a crime on this TikTok because, as HuffPost explains, people could face up to 20 years in prison and be fined for knowingly and with the intent to defraud, possess, or distribute any false, forged, or counterfeit bill, according to 18 U.S. Code 480. Now, I'm assuming that he knows this, which is why he put a disclaimer in his video description on TikTok saying that it's just a joke and telling everyone to calm down. Now, whether or not it's actually a joke, I have no idea, but if one of his deranged right-wing followers ends up doing this, and gets an innocent unhoused person arrested or killed, it's a win-win for him because across the dozens, if not hundreds of TikToks that he's uploaded to the page for the right-wing dating app that he owns, he's made it pretty clear that he absolutely despises unhoused people and he just doesn't view them as human beings. For example, here's just some of his thoughts about the unhoused. I have a dream that one day Americans will be able to walk down the street of any city in the country and not be harassed by a homeless man. Los Angeles is run exclusively by Democrats, and they're the ones that say they're going to clean up the environment. Notice how he's talking about cleaning up the environment while referencing unhoused people, as if they're just trash that needs to be swept away. But we're not talking about trash. We're talking about actual human beings here. But to him, he doesn't view them as anything but trash. He thinks that they're subhuman. He thinks that he's better than them. But I'm so sick and tired of hearing conservatives complain about unhoused people while not offering any solutions to end homelessness, while not supporting any of our solutions to end homelessness. Remember, this is a former White House official. So rather than complaining about unhoused people, why not propose some solutions? Why not give houses to the unhoused because it's actually cheaper than criminalizing and policing them and jailing them? Well, he doesn't want to do that because I'm sure he'd say it's socialism and, you know, he doesn't want to pay for that. Okay, well, if they're harassing people on the streets, whatever he means by that, maybe they're experiencing a mental health crisis. Perhaps if we're not going to house them, we can at least offer them free mental health care. No, I don't want to do that either because that's also socialism and I don't want to pay for that. Okay, well, listen, if we don't want to do anything about the people currently on the streets, why not strengthen our social safety net 
so that way less people fall into that predicament and become unhoused. Well, no, because that's welfare and, you know, they just need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. It's ridiculous. They want to complain about unhoused people while supporting zero solutions that would actually end this crisis. Meanwhile, this dipshit is prioritizing a ban on porn if Trump gets back in office, because according to him, that's what's really going to cause society to flourish. They're just so fundamentally unserious that I can't fucking take it. Right. But it gets worse because I'm sure that you'll all be surprised to learn that he also hates more people that are less fortunate than him or people who are marginalized. It's not just unhoused people or people who are poor. He also hates LGBTQ plus people and trans people in particular. And he broadcasts all of his odious views to the millions of people who watch him on TikTok in the most insufferable way imaginable. So here's just a small taste. I just want to thank my parents for not letting me pick my gender while I was trying to eat crayons and glue my hands together. Solar eclipses are amazing. You know what's even more amazing? A virus so smart that it attacks every four years during a presidential election. Just so you know, calling someone privileged because they're white is judging someone by the color of their skin. So people that say make America great again are a threat to democracy. But people who shout death to America aren't. He is the smuggest motherfucker on the planet. And I swear to God, like 90% of his TikToks are of him saying some dumb smarmy shit for like five seconds and then taking a bite of ice cream or whatever he's eating and then smiling like he just dropped some bars. It is the most insufferable thing I think I've ever seen. But I do want to give him a little bit of help with that last point that he made because, you know, the people who are shouting death to America, he might disagree with them, but they're not cooking up plans to overturn American democracy and subject everyone else to authoritarian rule by a dictator. Whereas people like him, who are shouting make America great again, they actually have a very specific plan called Project 2025 to turn America into a Christian nationalist theocracy. And this new plan was concocted after his first plan failed. And I say this because John McKenty is the guy credited as making January 6th possible in the first place, as explained by this 2021 piece in The Atlantic by Jonathan D. Carl. And Carl goes on to explain, quote, McKenty and his enforcers made the disastrous last weeks of the Trump presidency possible. They backed the president's manic drive to overturn the election and helped set the stage for the January 6th assault on the Capitol. Thanks to them, in the end, the elusive adults in the room, those who might have been willing to confront the president or try to control his most destructive tendencies, were silenced or gone. But McKenty was there, bossing around cabinet secretaries, decapitating the civilian leadership at the Pentagon, and forcing officials high and low to state their allegiance to Trump. When Trump wasn't happy with the answers he was getting from White House counsel Pat Cipollone, McKenty set up a rogue legal team. This back-channel operation played a previously unknown role in the effort to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to overturn the vote. Just days before January 6, McKenty sent Pence's office an absurd memo making the case that Pence would be following Thomas Jefferson's example if he used his power to declare Trump the winner of the 2020 election. More than anyone else in the White House, McKenty was Trump's man through and through, a man who rose to power at precisely the moment when American democracy was falling apart. Now, that's just a small sample from a really long and comprehensive article, but basically McKenty was reinforcing all of Trump's bad ideas and terrible instincts, and he was also trying to rally other Trump administration officials into supporting Trump's coup attempt. And before that, McKenty was snitching on basically everyone in Trump's administration who he thought was insufficiently loyal to Daddy Trump. And because Trump loves ass kissers, he knew this and did exactly what he needed to do to gain influence and clout within the administration. You know, you kiss the ring, you brown nose a little bit, and Trump is all of a sudden listening to a lot of what you have to say. That's what he did. And now he would almost certainly be in Trump's administration if Trump were to get a second term. And I think that, you know, his previous actions in Trump's administration and his involvement in 2025, that was already a big enough red flag. But looking at his TikTok page gives us even more insight into this twisted, inhumane person and the way that he thinks. And if his TikToks hadn't gone viral largely due to how deranged they are, not a lot of people would even know about this asshole. So in a way, he's kind of doing us all a favor by broadcasting his depravity for the world to see. And what I always say is when people tell you who they are, we should listen, especially when they're that close to power. Make 
is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.